All right. Hey, everyone. My name's Alyssa. I am a content creator at Voyaging Overboard, content creator, blogger, all that what jazz. Um, so today I wanted to do a quick tutorial to show you how we went from this photo here on the left to this one here on the right. So it's going to be a pretty quick Photoshop tutorial. Um, I'm using my own presets. Uh, so it's just going to be kind of a quick play. So let's get started. Um, so I'm here in Lightroom. Um, and I'm going to do a single view here. And the first thing, this is completely unedited. You can see there's nothing happening over here. Um, so I am going to crop this photo because I know it's going to be for Instagram. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've come over to the crop. And now I'm going to the 8 by 10 or 4 by 5 ratio because that means Instagram won't crop it at all. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the rule of thirds here. So I want us to be in kind of this bottom half of the frame. Um, and I want the mountains to kind of be in this middle because I want to leave most of the sky clear because we're going to put in that rainbow that you saw. Um, okay, I'm clicking done. Um, so pretty easy there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here um, and we're going to see this is what it's going to look like. And then I am just going to open this in Photoshop and we'll get started editing there. So I am here in Photoshop now. So I've got my layers palette down here. My photo with my Lightroom edits is open. Um, and we're going to do two major steps when, while we're in here. So firstly, we're going to replace the sky. And then we're going to go ahead and add a depth of field because the, the lens that we shoot with is a wide angle. So you're not able to, for this specific lens, get as much of a depth of field. So I'm going to add that in. Um, but we do love the wide angle because it allows us to keep the camera and tripod pretty close to us without having to worry about someone taking it. Um, so I'll link the the tripod and camera and whatnot all in the description below and to the blog post about it. So the first thing I'm going to do to replace this guy is I'm going to make a copy of this layer. You can either drag it um, or you can click Command J. Don't edit this layer just yet, especially if you're new to Photoshop. Um, if you open through Lightroom, you'll still have that backup, but best just to leave that background layer there. Okay, so now that we have this, what I am going to do is I am, so one thing, I normally use actions, so I use some Mariana actions, um, but if you don't have those, I'm just going to quickly walk you through what you would do. So this guy is going to be pretty easy to select. Um, I could, in fact, just come over here and just drag it, and it'll do a pretty good job. So that's pretty much perfect. Um, if you have a bit of a different sky, so to unselect, I'm going Command D. You can go Select, Color Range, and then select that. And then that was just the color picker, so I'm adding that. Hopefully you can see this. OK, um, that's going to get me with a lot of these selections as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the lasso tool. And while I'm holding Alt, I'm selecting all of this foreground that I don't want. Just a big circle. OK, and then I released. So we just have this selected. Um, so we're going to, while we're on this background copy layer, so there's two things you can do here. First, you can make a layer mask. That's fine. Um, if you want to save that selection for later, just depending on whatever you're doing in Photoshop, you can also reselect it by clicking Control and then clicking on that layer mask and go Select, Save Selection. So I'm just going to title it Sky. Um, and then if I need it later, it's just going to be right over here in my channels. Um, and I can click it. And you can see it's already there from the layer mask, I guess. Um, so we have our sky selected. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open our sky. So I'm going File, Open. And I just have mine on my desktop. Rainbow Sky. Um, so this is included in the Samarana Actions. Um, but you can also go to Unsplash. OK, so I'm just dragging that layer in here. Yes, that's fine. OK. I want to reposition this, so I'm clicking Command T. You can also go Edit Transform. And I'm just going to drag this so that it fills up. Oh, actually, hold that thought. I am deleting this layer, and I am unselecting our sky. So I just click Command D to unselect. OK, I'm going back, dragging it in. Yes, that's fine. OK, now I am just going to size it. 
And depending on your version of Photoshop, you might have to hold down Shift. Um, where do I want it? I think that's pretty good. Okay, I'm clicking Enter. And now what I need to do is I need to actually apply this layer mask to here. So what I'm just going to do, I'm holding Control, Select. So the, the layer mask on the previous one was just kind of a way to save your selection. You want to make sure you're still on the sky layer after you have it selected. And then click the layer mask button again. There you go. Um, if for some reason you have a really tough skyline, what you can do is you can zoom in. I'm just clicking Control or Command Plus. You can go in. Um, I particularly like using, I have a Windows Surface Book right now, so I like being able to detach it as a tablet and use a pen um, because it makes it a little bit easier. So if for some reason something wasn't working or maybe you had some blue sky down here, what you can do is you want to click on your layer mask, make sure you're on the sky layer, come over to your brush, and you can click that to make sure that it's the standard colors and you're just using white and black, um, and you can just paint. So if there was sky there that I wanted, Ah, okay, there we go. Or if maybe there was a sign you didn't want. I don't like that. I'm going Control Z. Um, but if you do mess up, so I've messed up, instead of using Control Z, I'm switching and just painting that back in. Um, okay, so that's the first step. That's pretty easy. I'm like that. I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the image. Okay, this bit's a little bit harder. So I'm making two copies of my layer now. Um, and the first copy I am going to select. So one thing you can do is you can do select subject. This doesn't always work very well. So it's going to take its time to select what um, I'll most definitely have to go back in. <laughs> okay, it actually did an okay job. So I'm going to zoom in. It doesn't really matter what layer you're on here. Make sure you're on a layer with the people if you're working with a variety of different layers. What happened there? Okay. Yeah, I didn't like that. Okay, so I just messed it up. So I'm going Command Z, Control Z. Okay, um, so in here, it's not really gonna matter how well you select the feet. So don't worry about that. Um, what matters is the upper areas because we're not gonna make it, we want it to look natural. We don't want this to look super Photoshopped for depth of field. So I am gonna make sure that this is pretty good. Um, and I'm just holding down Alt to change between selecting and deselecting. Um, I prefer the selection tool, but there's a whole variety of selection tools out there. So I'm going to be quiet now, and we're just going to speed this part up. Okay. Um, so I have my selection now, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refine it a little. Um, and it's also important to know, like in the face area, I wasn't super precise, but because this is just for Instagram um, and it's not going to be a large blown up print, you really won't be able to tell um, because Instagram downgrades the quality of the photo anyway. So I'm not too concerned, but you can always go back in and take your time with that. I'm going to go to select and mask now. Okay. And what this is going to let me do is I am going to click smart radius, but I'm always really cautious because it does expand it quite a bit. So I'm just going to set it at one pixel. See how that looks. You can even do like 0.5, kind of go with that. Um, I always do smooth about one to two pixels. Let's try two. Um, and I'm definitely going to feather it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to zoom in to see how I like that. Also, I'll link the dress and these shoes below. They're super comfortable. These shoes are waterproof. It's awesome. Okay, so here, look at this. I do not like this. You can still see the rocks. Um, and that's going to be noticeable. So what I'm doing is I'm just coming in here. I don't particularly like working in the selection tool on this aspect because it changes everything. Um, and you do have to be really precise. So again, I'm holding Alt. OK, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to click OK. I know that all of his feet, it's not just his feet selected, it's also the ground, but I'm not too concerned about that. Okay, so I'm going select. I'm going to save my selection um, just so I have that later if I need it. Um, and then I'm going to make. So I have this actually. So I have my selection of save. I'm going to check. Okay, perfect. Now what I'm going to do is while I'm on this second layer here, um, I'm going select, modify, expand. And I'm going to expand it about five pixels. That's perfect. 
Okay, then I'm right clicking on the selection and I'm clicking fill. Um, content aware, yep, color adaption, um, normal and 100%. You don't need to preserve transparency. I'm clicking OK. And we'll just let it do its thing. This is going to take a minute. Okay, um, and you would actually be able to tell until you turn your hot top layer off here. I'm going to deselect com Control D or Command D. Okay, that's that's fine from far away. Um, this does not need to be perfect. Whatever you have is probably fine. So I'm turning this top layer back on. I'm going to my channels. I'm selecting us again. So Control and clicking on that. Okay, that's our selection. I'm clicking on the top layer now. Um, and I'm going to put a layer mask on it. So you'll see the background, everything but the people should be black and the little people should be white. Okay, I'm clicking on background copy, window, actually, oops, filter, blur, or blur gallery, and I want field blur for this one. Okay, this might take a minute to load. Okay, we already see it happening here. Okay, I'm going to move this. The one that it automatically comes up with. Come on. I need a new computer, guys. I ordered one. This one is on its last legs. <laughs> Come on. Move. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm just clicking on the wheel and I'm turning the blur right here down to zero. I don't want any blur there. It's going to look the same. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put another field blur right at the top of our heads. Um, so if you have this layer mask on, this this top layer, the background should be blurred, but the people won't. Um, keep in mind, if you people are a bit further away and you have more foreground here, you're going to want to add a bit of blur to that too. But wherever the line, you want the no no blur by their feet. So so I like that. You can make the blur a lot deeper. That looks really fake. Um, even that's quite a lot. I usually don't go for extreme because uh, I also want to be able to see the background a little bit. So I'm going to stick at about 10. Um, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to wait for it to load. OK, there it is. Um, so you can turn it on and off. There you have it. Um, so this is the final. So you can see this was the before and or the before excuse me that's the before and the after if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and be sure to check out the links in the description thanks for stopping by guys